one again as we try to the conclusion of this 43rd race of champions. 10 laps to go. 240 of them in the book. It's material. Iwanitsko. Fuller. Tony Cisco and Steve Park. Expect the shootout at the finish line. Nine laps to go. You know, last year, Iwanitsko kind of fell in the second spot. This year, he's not only racing his second, he's going for the all-out win. Look at this, Roger, side by side. We've seen this throughout the course of the day. Mike Iwanitsko takes the lead. Ricciurio back to second. Muller hangs at top third. Cisco fourth, Clark fifth. Eight laps to go. Iwanitsko's not just in the lead. He has pulled out to about a three-car length advantage, and I think it was just a matter of him getting a chance to get by the 69 car of Ruggiero. That could have been the uh, key there. He needed that restart to get by. Mike Iwanitsko out of North Babylon, New York. We'll have seven laps to go. He is a young, talented driver. This year he had the opportunity to run the entire 1993 modified tour. I'll tell you what, there would not be a more happier man down in victory lane if this young guy could pull off the win here in the race of champions. And right now, he has about a 15-car length lead as they head down the back straightaway into turn three. Mike Ewanitsko, North Babylon, New York. Five laps to go. Pouches back up in the fifth spot, but there's just not enough time left at this uh, juncture of the race. Iwanisko is pulling away from him at this uh, point. He has this one just about in his hip pocket. Let's not call it yet. <laughs> we've seen what happened we've, here yeah, last we've, year. We've seen what has happened. Mike Iwanisko will have three laps to go as they come by. Ruggiero second, Fuller third. I'll tell you what, Billy Pouch just made an outstanding move through lap traffic. He passed three cars. He is now up to second spot, Roger. What a move by Billy Pouch, and he always catching the 36 car. Look at this. He is right up on the bumper, Billy Pouch, with two laps to go. With two laps to go. Billy Pouch is going to bid for the lead against my Mike Ewan. Let's go down the back straight away. Talk about pulling the rabbit out of the hat. Billy Pouch will take the white flag on this pass by the stripe. Billy Pouch. This is unbelievable. Princeton, New Jersey is going to pull this one off. Talk about pulling it from behind. He's got two more left turns to negotiate. He's got that 93 Pontiac cranked up. Billy to the checkered flag, the winner of the 43rd race of champions. From 43rd starting spot, the last row. And you only need, Roger, you only need to lead one lap in automobile racing, and Billy Pouch proved that here. There's no doubt why he is the kingpin of Flemington Fair Speedway. Unbelievable to put this into the long list of credentials that he has done here. What an accomplishment for not only him, but for team owner, Mark Fiore. Fiore gets his second race of champions victory. This crowd is ecstatic here. This is Billy Pouch country down here. There's even a set of grandstands made there for him. Yes, there is. Right adjacent, the, uh, the covered grandstands right to the right of them as you look from the infield. And boy, I'll tell you, just an outstanding, outstanding closing laps run by Billy Pouch. This is the way, unofficially, the top five finished. It was Jeff Fuller who did pit one time and made this 250 lap event finishing second. Then it was Tony Siscone with a great run finishing third. It was Mike Iwanitsko who led the closing laps of this race only to see the lead disappear to that man, Billy Pouch, with just three laps to go. He took the lead on the white flag lap and managed to pull it off. Reggie Ruggiero in the 69 car out of Berlin, Connecticut, finished fifth. I'll tell you what, absolutely outstanding here. This crowd is still on their feet. He's had the next to last five battles. Did not get the ride in this car until late Friday. Mario Fiori called him up. He could have been up at the Eastern States 200 running at the Rolling Wheels Raceway where they're running a major dirt track event where he was expected to be. He said, I didn't have a car. I didn't have the motor ready for that event. Thought 
I just set out this weekend. Mario called him up. He only lives a short distance from this track. And uh, I'll tell you what, Roger, this is like a throwback to the old race of Champions Day when it pitted days when it pitted the dirt track drivers up against the uh, asphalt drivers. And boy, Fauci certainly showed them uh, that the dirt boys can still uh, run with the best of them on asphalt here. He's Billy the Kid, as he's known here. Pouch, and uh, man, oh man, this has got to be one of the most historic races in a long Billy, time coming. These are the type that you remember because it was one of those. He was up there through the middle portion of the race, and he was he was a contender. But then he was like out of it. Where was Billy Pouch? We didn't see him on the leaderboard. He was back in traffic, and boy, in the closing laps of this one.